So first of all, let's do some adjustments to this. So we can see that Dan uploaded this to our CC files library. So we've now got access to it from here. So let's open that up. But I'm going to go, not going to create a library from it straight away. So we'll cancel that. And we can see that we have now our three layers here, our background color, our background image, and the rendered image from Felix. So let's just make some adjustments to that. So first off, I'm going to make um, some exposure adjustments and then going to apply them to just this layer. And let's bring the exposure up a little bit, uh, change the offset. I just want to make this image just pop off this page a little bit more and do that gamma offset there. So we've just got that, we're defining the edges a bit more on there. And the next thing that we're going to do is create a shadow for this. And we can do this really easy. So imagining now the circle, what that would look like there, we just drag out a plane, uh, a circle like that. Yep, that looks about right. And we need, oh, hang on a minute. We need to make sure that we're not in that layer. So let's go down to this layer. There we go. Let's create, in fact, let's create a new layer. And let's grab that shape again. That's about fine. Let's change its color to black. And we'll move that into place there. That's, that's okay. And then with that filter, we're just going to use Gaussian Blur. And convert that to a smart object. Yep, that's fine. And then in our layers panel, we'll just drop the opacity down a little bit. There we go. So we've just got a bit of shadow they're just ready to go. Now I'm going to also add, um, I'm going to choose, I'm going to use a mask on this layer as well to just make sure that everything is fitting nice and neatly into the image. Okay, so we are now good to go. Now a good way to, a good thing to do with images when they come in like this is to use artboards because with artboards, as we know, we can replicate them, we can test out different ideas and looks with artboards very quickly. So I'm just going to select all of the layers that I want here, and then I'm going to go to Artboard from Layers, select that. And I'm gonna select that this is a custom artboard to use the sizing that's on the page. And let's just call that Coffee Cup, <laughs> click OK. And now we have our artboard, so we're good to go. So if we open up our CC Libraries panel now as well, I'm gonna create a new library and call that Coffee Cup, create. And now I'm gonna just drag that artboard into the folder there and we can see that that artboard is now in that library ready to go. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this image out as a PNG. Now, the reason why I'm going to do this is because currently the libraries that we create here aren't available in um, Spark online, on Adobe Spark. So what we're going to do is we're going to export them to the CC. Now, this is where it gets a bit confusing. Um, the CC libraries and the, C and the Creative Cloud folder are um, two different two different file sets. So what we're going to do here is we're going to export this into, we can see our Creative Cloud files, which is different to our Creative Cloud libraries. This is our cloud storage. These are our CC libraries. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call that coffee cup and create. And we're going to export that out as a PNG and click save. Okay, so we're all done here so we can Minimize this down. Let's open Chrome and you can see I'm already in Adobe Spark. And I'm going to create a new post project. And we'll put this as amazing. Coffee to brighten your day. Quite nice, click continue. Oh, we should have chosen our size there, but there, there we go, we can change that at any time we want. We just click on resize, let's do this as a Facebook post. And then we're going to choose our background image. So we can see here we've got replace photo. So now we've got our library. So if I click here, we've got down here that library that I just created, coffee cup, and I can choose the image here. Let's just 
reposition that. There we go. There we go. Let's just reposition that there. Okay. Yep, that's good. And now we can move on to our text and we can change the text design here. Let's choose something. There we go. That's nice. Oh, let's go back one. We can, this is the great thing with Adobe Spark. We can try lots of different designs very, very quickly. Can you imagine doing this in Photoshop? I mean, this is the reason why I'm doing, using this tool instead of using Photoshop, because we could have just created the text and everything in Photoshop. But what I like about this is that we can, we can buzz through some um, different styles until we get the one that we want. And then we can change our color scheme. So let's go, let's have a look what we've got here. Mm, that's nice. And go back to our, let's go back to our background. And you can see that we've got a style applied here to the background. So I'm gonna just set it back to none so that we're, um, we're back to the original look and feel of it. Let's go back to this text here. Uh, and we can even change things like the spacing. So. If we change, if we click on the spacing here, we can see, the, oh, let's cancel that a minute. Click on spacing and we can change the different spacing types or the alignment. So that's really useful, or the opacity, the font, all sorts of things. Let's go with colors. Um, let's see if I just switch out, let's go with, uh, I want to choose a color that's m more like one of the, yeah, there we go. That's good. Okay, let's go with that. Let's just move this text. Right, I'm happy with that. And now we're ready to go, so we can click on share. Now we could um, push this graphic out um, as uh, if we click on, I'm gonna leave the author off and I'm going to, no, I'm gonna leave the Spark branding on and I'm going to then create a public link. Oh, I need to choose a category, so we'll choose food, create a public link. This is putting all of that graphic together and now I can export it out to Facebook and Twitter and I can edit the details and so on. Oops, sorry for zooming in there. I can also download this image uh, ready to use it in um, a local project that I'm um, on the website or so on. But here's the, the, the next thing that I really like about using Adobe Spark Post for this. Now I've created the look and feel that I want. If I go to my resize, we can see that now I can change the, what I'm creating to match the uh, social media campaign that I'm trying to run. So very quickly, I can create all of the different campaigns that I need to, and I can just make adjustments to them here very easily. And very quickly, I can create all of that social media content that I need all from one place. So that's um, using what we've done there is we've used Felix to create the graphics. We updated it, or created some, uh, just made the image slightly more dynamic in Photoshop. And then we've used Adobe Spark post to create our social media campaign. But let's go and use this in Muse now. So, so now we're going to use that image in Adobe Muse. Let's open up Muse and let's open up a new blank page. And there's a couple of different standard ways that we can use this. We could use this as a background image. We could just so make sure that we've clicked on the background here, right click, set as browser fill. There's, there's one way. Or we could do, let's just undo that. We could do right click set as a page fill. So although that looks it looks like it's doing exactly the same, if we change this uh, page properties to, instead of fluid width, fixed width, and let's put some padding of, let's say 20 around here. You'll see now that we have got, uh, let's bring this down as well. You can see now that the image is now sitting in the page fill rather than the browser fill. So let's uh, just undo that. What else could we do? We could place a copy onto the page. So we could just draw that out onto the page there, like so. And then we could manipulate this and obviously that's going to scale. We can also double click in now and change the actual, if we, if we change the, we can change the scale and pressing shift to 
squish it or we can um, we can move it around within its frame here. That's another thing that we could do. Or if we added a rectangle to the page, let's add just a normal rectangle and let's make that stretch to browser width, change its size here. Now with that selected, right click, set as fill. And now we can change the fill position to let's say center center. And if we set that fill to scale to fill, uh, let's drag that down a little bit more and maybe we'll change it to top uh, bottom center. So we've always got the bottom sat nicely in there. Now, if we preview this page in the browser, we've, well, maybe that would be better in the center. So there we go. So now we've got, we're using that image. So, the, I mean, those are things that you're familiar with anyway, but this is just showing you how, once we've created that artwork, it's very quick and easy to use the same artwork in all the different Adobe uh, apps and properties that we've got to build social media campaigns and to use it within Muse itself. So thanks for watching this series of videos. I uh, hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed Project Felix with Dan and we look forward to bringing you more videos. Thanks for watching.